Hey everyone, we got another P5JS video today and today what we're going to be doing is creating an ink drip effect. So if you want to see how it's done, you can open up your own code window and code along with me or if you're not vibing that, there's going to be a link in the description to this code where you can just play around with it yourself. So let's get into it. We're in a blank P5JS sketch here. All I've done to prepare for this is I've just increased the size of the canvas a bit just so you can see what's going on a bit better and I think the way we're going to start this is we're going to jump straight into creating a drip class. Uh, so we'll just say class drip and we'll put in a constructor. And I think all we need to pass in for the moment is the X and Y location and I think also the radius, so the, the size of the drip that we're going to start with. Um, so the way that we're going to achieve this effect is we're just going to essentially just have a particle that is a circle and we're just going to move it down and wiggle it about a bit and make that circle shrink and that should uh, give us the appearance of a drip. So we'll just say this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y, and this dot r equals r. Um, and I think actually we're going to have to, so over time what we're going to do is as we update this we're going to not only move it but shrink it as well so this r value is going to change. And I think though we'll need to keep track of how big it was to start with because we're going to do some things where we are going to map the radius to achieve certain effects. So how fast it's moving and how uh, see-through the drip is. And so in order to do that we need to know how big it was to start with. So we're also going to say this dot start r is equal to r as well. So this start r won't change but we will be changing the radius this dot r as we update. Um, and speaking of the update function, we'll do that next. So we're going to say update. And I think to start with, we're just going to make it really simple. So this dot y plus equals one. So that'll move the drop down the screen. And then we'll say this dot x plus equals a random amount between. And we're going to wiggle it about a bit. So we'll start small. So 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So it'll wiggle randomly between half a pixel on each side. And then we also want to shrink the radius, so we're going to say this dot r minus equals, uh, we'll say 0 0.1 for the moment, we'll see, we'll probably fiddle with all these values in a little bit. Um, and then we want to actually see this on the screen, so we're going to have a draw function. And inside this draw function, I think it's going to be very simple, I think we're just going to put in a circle at this dot x, this dot y. And the circle function, I think, takes a circumference, so we'll pass in this dot r times 2. And I think that's all we need in the draw function for the moment. We'll probably uh, change this in a sec because we want to change how uh, each drip is filled in so that as it's getting towards the end of the drip, it'll be less uh, opaque, it'll be more see-through. But I think that will get us started. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to make it so that when we click the mouse, a drip appears at the mouse location. So we'll just say for the moment, let drip and then we'll say in the mouse released function what we're going to say is that drip equals a new drip and we'll give it a, an x location of the mouse x and a y location of the mouse y and then for the radius we'll just give it a random value and for the moment we'll just say it's between 5 and 10 but we can obviously change that in the future um, and so then what we want to do is in the draw function, we want to say if we've got a drip, so if we've set this, because initially this drip will be set to null and we can't update it if there's no, no drip. So if we've got a drip, then we want to update the drip and we want to draw the drip onto the screen. Okay, so if we run this and we click, <laughs> well... That's not exactly the effect that we were trying to achieve. So there's a few things going wrong here. Firstly, this uh, this effect kind of relies on keeping the drips that we've already drawn, the circles that we've already drawn on the screen, and that's not happening because this background is basically being pasted over the top each draw. So we're going to move the background into this setup function. Um, and so now what we should see is that when we click, we get the circle keep drawing but you can see there's quite a few other things going on here as well so firstly I think we should probably fill the uh, circle in to be 
black and have no outline around it. So in the setup, we're going to say no stroke. Um, and going back to the draw, so we want it to be black, but we also want it to fade out as it gets towards the zero radius. Uh, and so we're going to do this by saying, let the A value, which is going to be the alpha for the, the film, uh, equal, and we're going to map this dot R, which starts at this dot start R, and it will go to zero. We want to map that between 255 when it's at its biggest, so it's fully uh, filled in, and then when it gets down towards a zero radius, we want it to be not filled in at all, so we'll put in a zero. And then in this fill statement, we'll just put in A here, and that gives it the alpha value. So now when we run this, you should see that this drip fades out as we get towards the bottom. But as you can see, there's another issue. So if I make two drips, you'll see that the first drip stopped updating uh, when I clicked for the second drip. And that's happening because we're just simply overriding this drip with a new drip each time that we click the mouse. So you can see it stops updating these old ones. And so the way we're going to get around that is instead of just having a single drip, we're going to have the drips in an array. So we're going to say let drips equal an array. And then when we release the mouse, instead of overriding a drip, we're going to just say drips.push new drip. And this will put a new drip into that list of drips that we've got. And then inside the draw function, Instead of saying if drip, we're going to instead say uh, for let i equal zero, i is less than drips dot length, i plus plus. And so we're just going to go through all the drips in our array. And instead of saying drip dot update, we have to say drips i dot update. And instead of drip dot draw, it's drips i dot draw. And so now, when we run this, we should see that even when we've got multiple drips, they all keep going. Uh, one thing to note though, is that this drip array is just gonna keep growing and growing in size, even when these drips have finished updating. So it's not really an issue at the moment with only a couple drips on the screen, but if you've got lots and lots of drips on the screen, it's gonna really slow down. So what we're gonna do is after we've updated this drip, we're gonna check to see if the drip that we've just updated, so drips i, and we're gonna check if its radius is less than zero. Because down here in the update function, what we're doing is we're shrinking and shrinking that radius. And so once it's gone to zero, then we've finished the drip. So what we can do is if the drips radius is less than zero, we're gonna say drips.splice, and we're gonna, which, this function can remove an item from the array. And so we give it the location that we want it to remove and how many. So we're just wanting to remove that single drip at that I location. And then once we've done that, we want to say continue. And this will just go to the next drip because we don't want to draw the one that we've just removed. In fact, it'll draw the next one because we've just removed one from the array. And speaking of that, we now have to go through this array in reverse instead of going through it forwards because since we're removing one, the orders will get all messed up if we don't go through it backwards. So instead of saying let i equal zero, we're gonna say let i equal drips.length minus one, which is the last location in the array. And then instead of going to drips.length, we're gonna go to while i is greater than or equal to zero. And then lastly, instead of going i plus plus to go forwards through the array, we're going to go I minus minus to go backwards. So now we should see there won't be any visual difference at the moment, but once a drip has finished dripping, it'll get removed from the array. And so it means that we can have a lot more drips uh, because we're not updating the ones that we don't have to anymore. Now, I think to make this drip effect a little bit better, I think what we're going to do is we're going to change how this update happens here because uh, at the moment, every single drip is dripping at the same speed and it's a constant speed throughout the whole lifetime of the drip. So I think what we want to do is we actually want to um, figure out what the maximum speed of the drip should be. And that will be based on how big it is to start with. So the bigger the drip is, the faster it's going to fall. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate that maximum speed. And then depending on how big it is, we're going to again map between the maximum speed and zero. So when it's big, it's going at, at its fastest and as it shrinks, it'll slow down. So to do that, we're just gonna say this dot max speed 
equals map um, the radius that we're given, so the start radius, and that is going to be between, at the moment it's between 5 and 10, but again these are values you can change. So it's between 5 and 10, and when it's at 5, I guess we'll give it a speed of, I don't know, 3, and when it's at its biggest size, we'll give it a speed of 6, I don't know. These are just random numbers that I'm pulling out of the top of my head, so definitely feel free to play around with these ones. Um, and then, so in the update, instead of saying always uh, making the y direction move by just one, we're going to say map this dot r, which is between this dot star r and zero. So this is very similar to what we were doing with the alpha in the draw function. Um, and so then, when it's at this, uh, when it's at its start radius, then we want it to be going at its maximum speed. So this dot max speed. And when it's at its minimum radius, we want it to be going at zero speed. So I think this should give us a bit of a better drip effect. So you can see that the bigger ones are moving faster and as they get towards the bottom, they're slowing down. Now, another thing that we can play around with is this dot R value and how quickly we're changing it. So I think I probably will just leave this as a constant value, but it is something that you can absolutely play around with. So I've just made it a bit smaller here and you can see that the drips are now a lot longer because they're taking longer for that uh, radius to reach zero. And so it, they thin out slower. But obviously if I make this um, a lot bigger, then, <laughs> then you get really short little drips because that radius is going to zero really quickly. So I'll put this back to something like that. And I think that is just about our finished drip effect. I really hope you've enjoyed watching. If you want to grab the code for this, there'll be a link down in the description. Um, and so you can play around with this yourself. There's a bunch of values in here, like we've discussed, that you can play around with to make this drip effect your own. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.